All right, well, congratulations on making it thus far into the tutorial. Um, the mesh of the donut, like its shape, is pretty well finished. Um, now we can start talking about uh, lighting and rendering. So everything we have done thus far has just been in sort of viewport mode, right? Like in this shaded, this is solid view viewport mode. Um, but when you actually create a final image, uh, or an animation, it's actually going to be using a separate mode called rendered view mode. And that is where you actually determine how things look, like the, the color of things, where the light is, all that kind of thing. So that you can actually have a look at by clicking on that final little dot there, that's rendered view mode. Um, or by the way, a hotkey for switching between all these modes here is a Z, and that'll bring up this pie menu here. So this is solid view, what we've always been looking at, um, and then that's rendered. We've also got two others which we haven't really used. We'll probably use them later on. But anyways, for now, we're gonna have a look at rendered view mode. Um, and this is rendered view mode, okay? So uh, things look a little different. Um, <laughs> It not too much different, but a little bit different. One biggest thing is that there's light, right? There's an actual directional light. Um, and we know that, uh, that it's working because that's our light over there, right? Now, if we move this light in closer, uh, which we could do just by hitting G and sort of move things around. And I just realized this uh, screencast tool is turned off. Okay, good, should keep that active. Uh, so if we move this light in, just closer to our donut, like so, um, you can see that as I move this around, that it's uh, the light and the shadow is reflected on that donut there. Um, okay, so let's let's make this scene a little more interesting because right now there's like the donut's not casting any shadow onto anything else because it's just a donut hovering in outer space basically. So let's add in a plane. Um, okay, so for some reason, by the way, my cursor, that little cursor, is turned off. Uh, this, by the way. It's not important, but this drop down here is how you can determine the, the look of your viewport, if there's anything to turn on or off. Anyway, the 3D cursor, the, uh, and the reason the 3D cursor is important is that I'm gonna add a plane, and wherever the 3D cursor is, is where new objects get dropped. Um, and you can move your 3D cursor by shift right click, that'll change this 3D cursor, or just shift C will actually clear it, and it'll put it in the center of your, your grid floor. Anyways, so I'm gonna add a plane, one thing at a time. Shift A uh, is that menu for adding new things, and we're gonna go for mesh, plane. And there we go, we have a plane. And I'm gonna focus on the plane just so I can move around it, good. Um, okay, so I want my donut to obviously be sitting on the plane, so it's like sitting on a countertop. Um, so we could, you know, grab my donut here and move it up, but then the icing doesn't come with it. And it's obviously very important that these two are linked. We could select them both by hitting shift, you know, and selecting them both like that. But let's save ourselves some time for the future as well and uh, link these two. So we do that by parenting it. Uh, so the way you parent things in Blender is you select first the object that is the child of a parent object, meaning like the one that's supposed to follow another object. So the icing first, then shift, click on the object which is gonna become the parent, the master object, and then I'm gonna hit control P for parent. And then I'm gonna select, uh, you can select object or object keep transform. I always use keep transform because sometimes if you're working with lots of stuff, the first one doesn't do exactly what you'd expect. Keep transform always works, but basically that. Um, and then when you do that, if you move your donut, you will see that the icing comes with it, which is what we want. Nice. Uh, by the way, in your outliner up here where you've got the, the, the objects, when you parent something to another object, um, it actually, it looks as though it's vanished from the outliner, but it's actually just underneath it now. So it's inside the outliner underneath that object above it. Anyway, but now now we've got that. Now the donut, uh, the donut is the master the master of all, the keeper of light and truth, and uh, the icing is following it. Good, all right, so let's just move this lamp in a little bit closer, like so. Okay, so um, why is there no shadow? Why is the donut not casting shadow onto the plane there? Uh, well, we could, with our lamp here selected, we could check it out. Oh, contact shadows, oh yeah, I've done this tutorial a couple of times. Contact shadows was turned on, but uh, turned off by default. But anyways, um, it's using this light here, and uh, these are all the settings for the light. 
Now, um, we could turn down the, the strength of this. We could change, you know, how things look because see, the, the shadow is not really there. We could turn on contact shadows, which will give a little bit of shadow to it. And that's all well and good. But the thing is, is that uh, this mode that we're in right now, this, this render view mode, is it's using a rendering engine to present this to us. And the rendering engine that is defined by default in Blender, if we go to the rendering panel up here, the render engine is EV, which is a real time rendering mode. And it's really, really fast renders. Like if you wanna do like a long animation, like a TV show, or you're working on a really tight deadline, uh, EV is great because it's like, really fast and it's just like unreal engine it's like all those kind of things it does require a lot of optimization though like you've got to really work with light and shadow to try to make it look correct um however blender comes with another render engine workbench by the way forget that that's just for like viewport it's very rarely used cycles is the other main one so if we switch to cycles it will look like this. Now my recording is gonna be slightly screwed up because uh, the device of which it is gonna be rendered as by default is set to CPU. I wanna change this to GPU. And that's gonna use my graphics card. So I've got two NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti's. So it's important that I actually use those because they're way faster than my CPU. If you don't see GPU here, by the way, you can actually uh, go edit preferences and then underneath system, uh, you'll actually show the devices that you have that are compatible with uh, CUDA or OpenCL. Uh, OpenCL, I believe, is for yeah, AMD cards. CUDA is NVIDIA's cards. Um, so you may, depending on your hardware, you may see something here. Um, you might not have anything that's compatible like CUDA or OpenCL, in which case you're going to have to use CPU. Um, and that's fine. It's just CPU is generally a little bit slower than GPU. So you'll still be able to render doesn't matter, um, but it just might be a little bit slower. Anyways, I'm gonna use GPU. Now you'll notice that when we switched from, uh, when we switched from EV to cycles, it looks much more realistic immediately. The shadows are accurate. The shadows are matching the, the donut here. Everything is working the way you would uh, expect. Um, and that's because Cycles is what's called an unbiased rendering engine, which means it calculates things like physically accurate to the way things are in the real world. It's like throwing light inside the donut and it's like bounce lighting around inside this ring here. Um, if there was different colors, you would see like light bleed, like it would reflect the light onto other parts of it. Um, these shadows here, they're all accurate. Uh, animated movies like Pixar, Disney, all VFX, everything like that uses render engines like Cycles, unbiased ray traced engines. Video games use something like EV, although EV will not allow you to create a game. It's not a game engine, but it, the way it functions is very similar. So anyways, a polished high quality image or animation, you wanna use cycles. So um, the one downside to cycles is that it is grainy. So you'll notice that like, as you move around, it's like super heavily grainy and then it gets less and less grainy as time goes on. And you can actually see in the top left-hand corner, the, uh, the, the samples there uh, being uh, counted. So it'll stop at 32. Um, and the higher you, you set those limits to, when we get to that, um, the, the less grainy it will become. Anyways, uh, so let's, I, I know this tutorial, there's not a lot to this tutorial other than explanation, but it's, it's quite important. So I'm spending a whole video just talking about it. But anyways, um, let's, let's, let's render out like a very simple image. So my camera, the camera is what will actually be defined, like what you will look through when you uh, hit render, like to actually render a final image. So you can actually look through what the camera is seeing by clicking that little button there, or by hitting the shortcut as it's displayed, number pad zero. Um, and there we go, I'm looking through the camera. So we're way, 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 way out there. Um, now, you can move the camera closer, but uh, you'll notice like if you like, you know, move the view or like use the middle mouse or whatever to orbit, you are no longer looking through the camera. So the camera will stay where it is unless you use the controls designed for the camera, which is similar to like if you're moving an object, it's G to move that object. Um, and then you use the middle mouse, you push that once and then you can like zoom in. Now, a lot of people from other software and even like beginners are like, they find it very weird the way this functions. Um, other software, uh, it, it has it so that when you are looking through the camera, if you move the viewport or whatever, the camera will follow with it. So you can actually choose that by clicking lock camera to view in this properties here with the camera selected. And now as I move around, um, 
I can use the standard controls, middle mouse, orbit, uh, you know, scroll to come closer, etc., and the camera will follow. So you can use that if you uh, want. Um, or the other way, by the way, is like, this is the way I like to work. I get my position, like where I want the camera to be like looking, just in like standard view mode like this. And then I hit control, alt, number pad, zero. And then the camera will snap to the location that I'm looking at um, right there. But anyways, um, I just want to do like a very simple, like we'll, you know, this is a full tutorial, which will go into like, we'll add brick in the background and coffee and uh, a plate and all that kind of thing. But for now, I just want to have like a very simple look, right, of the, the donut on a plane. Um, so I've got some light there. So if I was to uh, render this right now, uh, which you can do by going to the top corner and hitting render, or the hotkey is F12. Anyways, when I do that, this will happen. You'll see that it starts, you've got like these little squares that will appear. It'll start in the middle and it'll sort of spiral out. And uh, there we go. We have an image. And if we were to hit Shift S um, or by going to image and then save, Shift S, you would actually be able to save it as like a PNG or a JPEG. Um, very simple, right? So it doesn't look very good. <laughs> it doesn't look very good at all. It's very white. It looks like it's made of clay. Um, so we'll do the materials in the next video. Uh, but uh, for this one, yeah, I just wanted to set the camera up, get the light somewhat uh, in an appealing way. I do have like lighting is such a complex, well, it's not you can get the basics, like basics is pretty easy, but understanding how light works, I've got like a full series on that. I'll put a link to that in the description and you can click up there if you wanna watch it now, but it's it's more for like once you've got the basics of Blender, you can watch that, but it'll explain all about like fall off, the inverse square law and all that kind of thing. But for now, I, I want you to know is like, you'll see that it's, it's pretty clear that there's light that's very close to the donut. Like it's kind of like a highlight over here. And then towards the right hand side, you've got like, it's darker. If you wanna have like even lighting over everything, you basically need to move the lamp further away from, uh, from your subject and then there will be less fall off. Um, it'll be like, it'll appear more constant, almost like sunlight, which in this case might be kind of desirable. We wanna have just kind of like evenly flat lighting across a counter. So I'm moving it, you know, that far. <laughs> you don't have to copy my exact settings. Like just, it, it actually, you'll learn more by doing things on your own and like experimenting with how things look, right? So I'm moving my lighting over there. When you move it away, obviously the uh, the lighting intensity is reduced because it's it's falling off. So the, the brightness of it is defined by the power. So you can increase the brightness right there. And I'll go with something like that. And then as a uh, way to get into the next video, because we're gonna start talking about materials, with my plane here selected, I'm gonna go to the material setting right down there, the material panel. I'm gonna click that. Um, you won't see this, by the way, that's a, an add-on that I've got enabled. I should probably turn that off. Um, but at the top, so this, this is material. This is where you define what colors things are gonna look, textures, all that kind of thing. So with my plane selected, I'm gonna click new to give it a new material. Um, nothing's changed so far because it's just the default setting. But the one, one setting here that we're gonna change just in this video, base color. I'm gonna make this blue like so, and there we go. We now have a donut sitting on a blue plane, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit render, like so. There we go, and then let's go save it, if you wanted to. Um, by the way, I haven't even talked about saving your scene in Blender yet, so just go save as, and save your scene, your .blend file. It's pretty simple, but I know like ZBrush make things pretty hard when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to saving, but Blender is pretty easy. It's just like save, um, but that's separate to the image, which I was talking about. Save, save the project of the blend. Anyways, hope, this, hope you learned something from this video. Go ahead and join me in the next video, and we are gonna be making the icing look pink, the donut look yellow, and uh, getting into the materials. So I will see you in that video.